This is the creepy story of Jeff the Killer. Jeff the Killer was once a normal boy named Jeff, and he had just moved to a new town with his family. One night, three teenagers attacked him at an outdoor party, and his face got severely burned. But he was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. A couple days later when he got his bandages off, his face was horribly deformed. He loved it, he said. It was perfect for his brand new personality. Jeff decided that he loved his face so much that he didn't want to stop looking at it. He didn't even want to blink so he burned his eyelids off. And he never wanted to stop smiling so he gave himself a permanent smile. That same night, Jeff murdered his family. But now he runs around killing little children with a knife. This is why you should always lock your front doors. A kid living with both of his parents decided to watch a movie for their family weekly movie night. He then gets up to use the restroom. As he is in the restroom, he sees all of the power in the house cuts off. And then he hears two loud thumbs. He locks the bathroom door and hears heavy objects being dragged across the hallway. The kid freaking out runs out of the bathroom and runs into the restroom. Once he is inside the room, he locks the door. As he locks the door, he jumps in bed and acts like he's asleep and hopes that this person who is in the house will ignore a child sleeping. He closes his eyes and hears the door creak at the same time. He squints his eyes and sees a man with no eyes dragging the bodies of both of his parents. The man dragging his parents sits his mom's dead body in a chair facing him and then sets the dad's body on the floor facing up. It was almost like whoever was in the house who killed them wanted him to see it. He then sees the man writing something on the wall and then climbs under his bed. He laid there for hours knowing that if he moved a muscle he would end up just like his parents. He finally built up enough courage to read the wall and the writing on the wall said, I know you're awake. This is why you should always lock your doors. A junior in high school was home alone working on a paper while his parents were out to dinner. All night, he sits with his back to his door, sitting at his desk with his noise-canceling headphones on. Around 11 o'clock, he takes his headphones off at the same time his parents are returning to the house, and he hears his mom from downstairs yell, Hey, Adrian, what happened? Confused, he runs downstairs and sees right away what she's looking at, muddy footprints all over the rug. He tells her, I didn't leave my desk. And then they realize someone must have broken in. They look at the footprints and there's none leaving the house. They're worried someone's still in the house. So they run into the garage, terrified, call the police. Police arrive and they don't find anyone in the house, but they do make a chilling discovery upstairs. The police bring them to the kid's bedroom door, which had been left open all night, and they point to the message written on it in Sharpie. This is the actual transcript of what was written on his door, which means for nearly two hours, someone stood in this kid's doorway watching him. This is a highly controversial topic. In 2016, a man posted on Facebook that the local police were going to kill him that weekend. That weekend, he died under very suspicious circumstances that we will get to. Immediately following his death, his YouTube page, which contained footage from his home's camera system, went viral. One of his videos shows a large group of police officers standing in front of his house for no apparent reason in the middle of the night. Others show what he claims to be plainclothes police officers casing his property. But the most talked about video is the one where the van shows up in front of his house, revealing a guy with a fairly high-tech camera who just starts filming his house. The man was found dead in his home after it had burned down, and he was found to have stab wounds on his back and his stomach. His death was determined to be self-inflicted. However, the debate rages on online. What happened to John Lang? These videos may seem innocent, but actually have a terrifying backstory. This video shows a man playing Dance Dance Revolution while some teens unknowingly record him and make fun of him. Six months after this video was taken, the man, Adam Lanza, would shoot his own mother four times in the head while sleeping, then drive to Sandy Hook Elementary School where he murdered 23 people. This video shows magician Tommy Cooper having a heart attack on live TV. The audience, as well as his assistant, thought it was part of the show, so they laughed along as he died on stage. 
This video shows a popular CSGO streamer showing off his new McLaren. However, he was banned from streaming a week later for hacking and this caused him to have a mental breakdown. So he purposely crashed his car into another van killing himself, a mother and her child. This video shows a band performing minutes before the venue burnt down and killed everyone inside. Even creepier, the band's name was Burn. Scariest urban legends from every state, Texas, the Candy Lady. In the 1900s, children in an unnamed rural town began to go missing, and people were blaming it on the Candy Lady. The story says that she would go around leaving candy on children's window seals, and she would be able to lure them in by leaving notes promising more candy. This story picked up steam when a farmer found rotted teeth on his farm and eventually found the dead body of a boy with candy stuffed in his pocket. While little is known about the origin of this story, many claim that the candy lady is real, and her name was Clara Crane. Whichever state gets the most likes, I'll do tomorrow. His story is called The Haunted Birthday Party. Samuel died on the 26th of November 2003 from a terrible accident, and only three years has passed since his death. But this isn't about Samuel, it's about his little sister Alice, who today is having her sixth birthday party. What's crazy for Alice is her brother Samuel died the day of his birthday three years ago. But as her first friend arrives, her stomach drops as she looks out and sees a single red balloon on the letterbox. You see, red was Samuel's favourite colour and the house was full of red balloons on his birthday. But when they found him strangled to death by the string of the balloon on the very morning of his birthday, they swore to never have a red balloon in the house again. But as a new guest would arrive, so did a red balloon. Her friends were so oblivious to this, they just kept chasing the red balloons around the house. But six of Alice's friends died that day, all strangled to death by the string on a red balloon. The house has now been vacant for 10 years, but the local kids say they still see a red balloon in the windows. Pictures taken right before death. First, we have this 18-year-old girl who wanted to get the most extreme selfie, so she climbed up a bridge which was about 30 feet high. And then she fell off, but it wasn't the fall that killed her. It was on her way down, she grabbed some electrical wires, and they electrocuted her. This picture was actually taken by a guy who was just testing out the new camera that he got and it shows this 14 year old boy literally flying out of a plane. It turns out he was hidden in the plane wheels and during takeoff he somehow fell out and it was caught on camera. This looks like your typical best friend picture before a night out, right? Except the night would end in disaster with one of them using the belt she was wearing to strangle the other and she then blamed it on being intoxicated and said she couldn't remember anything of the night anyways. This is the dark mirror and it's one of the most haunted items in the world. The original owner of this mirror purchased it at a psychic fair but immediately claimed that there was something very evil about it. So she donated it to a traveling museum for the paranormal. This museum has a whole bunch of different paranormal objects, but the dark mirror is by far the most horrifying. The museum actually has to keep the mirror covered and tell people that if they're going to look into it, they have to do so at their own risk. Because the people who are brave enough almost always regret it. The people who have looked into the mirror claim to feel an immediate sense of doom and depression. But for others, it was far more horrifying. Some claim to see their own facial expressions warp and twist and others would look into it and see their own dead body. The people who hold the mirror claim to feel a strange sense of electricity. And every night, the museum workers cover up the mirror. Every morning, they find it mysteriously uncovered. 